So I want to spend a second talking about abdominal injury. And the ones you probably heard of are things like sports hernia, athletopubalgia, which means pain in the pubic region for an athlete, or diastasis recti, which means, hey, I see a normal separation of things that are normally joined in the rectus abdominis, right? Or an actual hernia, which sometimes happens in athletes too. So when we're trying to wrap our heads around these three very different phenomenon, we ask ourselves, well, do these things have something in common? And they do have something in common around sort of the way the abdominals and the whole trunk functions. The way we should be thinking about the trunk is there's a radial contractile field, that all of the muscles and tissues, fascia, all of these systems, work to maintain the integrity of the spinal canal. They work to create pressure, high levels of intra-abdominal pressure, so that the trunk can be stiff, it can be dynamic, and maintain its length and integrity, right? By squeezing that thing down in a 360, we end up seeing sort of a more of a contractile field, less of abdominals working or which oblique is working. More importantly here, when we see tissues that are stiff, or we see tissues that have never been addressed, or we fail to appreciate that the pelvis is part of this big system, then what we can do is suddenly come up with a potential mechanism for why these tissues have been put into a position where they had failure or strain on them. Now keep in mind, sometimes we see diastasis recti in plenty of women who just are carrying babies and there's nothing they can do, comma, what we do see is that there are a lot of hernias we believe can be potentially mitigated uh, through a few very important things. So let's, let's start with a couple ideas. First and foremost, most of you who have ever had sore abs after doing all your crunches and your abs and your, your shred are stoked because your abs are sore, right? And what do you do for sore abs? Nothing. You eat ice cream and you celebrate looking good on Instagram naked. Comma, what we want to appreciate is that your abdominal system, and I mean that, I don't mean like just your abdominals, but the trunk musculature and fascia is actually no different than the rest of your system. So one of the things that you've seen people like Donnie Thompson put out for a long time is tempering or putting a heavy roller on your belly or Jill Miller getting on a soft squishy ball and addressing the sort of fascial and, and, and tissue insertions by just rolling around the ball. We call it gut smashing. We've been gut smashing for a minute. <clears throat> now, if you're into the TRS program, you'll see that gut smashing or abdominal work or working in the obliques is part of our program. The same way we address glutes, the same way we address calves, the same way we address hip extension or movements. You know, we have to appreciate that these tissue systems sometimes need input because they can be stiff and that stiffness can beget brittleness and potential strain under high load, high, high um, demand positions or sports. Now, one of the things that's interesting of course, is appreciating that no one aspect of the system works independently. When we think about the abdominals, we should be thinking that I've got connective tissue, fascia systems, I've got musculature systems, and a lot of these systems overlap. But what we want is, is that when, the, when the, 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 the shiz hits the fan, we want to make sure that we have access to all of those positions. So, for example, we talked a little bit about hey, you, sometimes you can end up just overly stiff and that's a problem, but sometimes we end up in positions where a lot of our musculature is inhibited. So people like Franz Bosch, for example, talk about um, the fact that as soon as we start to get out of position or out of plane, right, the abdominals start to lose their effectiveness very quickly. That if we have our two-hand rule of pubic bone xiphoid process, we put it in a third plane up at the roof of the mouth and the palate, suddenly we have sort of three diaphragms that we're trying to keep in relatively the same plane. Why? Because that's where we're gonna have the most function. Keeping in mind I'm designed to rotate and flex and all of those things, but when I start to go into some of these other range positions, I certainly can go there and have to go there safely to be a functioning athlete and throw a ball, but what ends up happening potentially is that I start to turn off some of the regulation or function of my trunk, that my abdominals don't work as well in some of those positions. My, the erectors in my spine don't work as well in some of those positions. So a lot of times when we're talking about trying to maintain a more organized position around the spine, it's not necessarily about injury and preventing injury of the spine, it's about trying to maintain the integrity of your function. So bending over in a rainbow is just less effective, potentially, of being in a better, more mid-range position. 
Well, that's true, especially when we see abdominal injury. And a lot of the abdominal injury that we see in this kind of sequelae of problems with the abdomens or insertion is that we end up seeing a lot of athletes who are overextended, right? That they end up kind of hanging out in this overextended position, which puts a large strain on these fascial systems and the abdominals can't do a great job to create the working environment to sort of unload some of those fascial positions. So we have tissues that are under strain and that potentially are stiff. And then Ben, if we start to add in environmental load, we start to add in poor uh, uh, sleep and nutrition, and hydration, and warm-up. Suddenly you can see that whoop, we end up potentially with a problem of connective tissue or musculature on the system. So, for example, athletic pub pubalgia, which is sports hernia, usually is pain in this region, right? Which is, this is a pubic bone. You can feel your own pubic bone here. But what's interesting is that, of course, is that your abdominals, your rectus abdominis, inserts here. This is the insertion of the, the abdominals but also your adductors come in from the other side. So you have adductor longus, the kind of right there. You've got pectineus coming in here. You've got some of the other uh, adductors underneath there, all inserting onto the, the piece here. So it's almost like your adductors are part of this contiguous system of abdominals. And that's the way we should think about it, that your legs are actually contiguous with your trunk. Newsflash. And so it turns out that if I'm missing rotation in my femur, don't have internal, don't have external, or I don't have good ex, uh, ability to even extend the hip, what we're gonna see is additional strains on these tissue systems, which starts again, limit the force production qualities or force production choices, options that these tissues have. So they start to become more in range, we start to hang on the connective tissue systems a little bit more, and that's often where we get the straw that can't, you know, that breaks the camel's back or we have you know, turned off enough function because the athlete is missing hip extension, doesn't have any rotation, adductors are stiff, get dragged into extension, and something becomes irritated. So a lot of these kind of classic hernias are failures in the hot dog wall. If you put a hot dog on a grill, sometimes you get a little bubble on the side, right? That's a hernia. And the idea here is besides diastasis, which is a little bit different issue and sometimes is, and is by the way, completely normal and heals most of the time, but appreciating that if I'm trying to improve the athleticism of my athletes, I want to improve their ability to contract, rotate, twist, and, and then have a full rotation of the hip. An easy place to start is to get your athletes doing some contract relax and some easy abdominal mobilization just by laying on a roller or laying on a D-ball and trying to get some motion and just some soft tube rest restoration. Can we keep those tissues supple? Can we keep them well hydrated? Having our athletes be better at owning this mid-range position and limiting the amount of large force translation that isn't supported, that is, ends up just being, you know, uh, hanging on the tissues potentially is one of the mechanisms for which these tissues strain. What's interesting, of course, is that trying to get into the after action around this is tricky. And rarely, when we're assessing or talking about these abdominal strains or abdominal tears or a little hernia in this inguinal section from the, here to here or an insertion problem of the muscle onto the bone, do we ever look downstream at the hip. So one of the ways, again, that we can say, hey, we can't guarantee that you're be you know, injury proof here. But what we can say is by maintaining your integrity of your normal range of motion and the quality of your tissues, you can do a lot to keep your tissues more robust by keeping them functioning at full power and full capacity and full choice. And that is always the goal.